PUH 250 Midterm Review Part 1. In this video, make sure to print out the blank review worksheet that appeared right before this video on Canvas. You'll be presented with a series of questions and make sure to jot down your answer on the blank review worksheet. Let's get started. We'll begin with samples and populations. Make note of your answers on the blank review Q&A. A group of people from a population is a what? What do we call a group of people that we select from a population? In biostatistics, we more often study populations. True or false? Surveying your family and friends is called a blank sample. So what kind of sample is it if we just simply survey our family and friends? And finally, convenient samples are likely to produce what? There are pros and cons of each type of sample. What is the major con from using only convenient samples? So the answers to those questions are a group of people from a population is called a sample. So remember, it's very difficult to capture data on an entire population. So we take a sample or a subset of that population. We'll try to take a random sample. In biostatistics, we more often study populations. This is false. Again, it's difficult to study an entire population. So we often take samples. If you survey your friends and family, this is called a convenience sample because they are convenient for you to sample. Convenient samples are more likely to produce what? Bias. Bias means that your results will not be representative of the population at whole because you selected them in such a manner that the sample is not fully representative. It is biased. So things to remember. We use sample data to make inference about populations because populations are difficult to capture. Random samples are the best kind of samples but are not always possible. And therefore, convenient samples are easier and less costly but can be biased. That is, they won't necessarily be representative of the entire population. So what about evidence? Let's look at the types of evidence. Which of the following is not a type of evidence? Changes over time, associations, differences, or guesses? Select your answer. The answer is D, guesses. Biostatistics is used to provide evidence in public health in four ways, and guessing is not one of them. Biostatistics can look at associations between variables, Biostatistics can help look at changes over time. Biostatistics can be used for targeting of resources. And then which impacted groups or populations exhibit group differences? Developing and defining research questions is the critical part in public health. We need to have a well-defined question before we can collect or use data to answer that question. Which of the following is an intervention? Personal choice of diet or assigned diet? Which of these is a better research question? Does older age cause higher BP or is age associated with blood pressure? Assigned diet is an intervention. Remember, we can have two types of studies, experimental or observational. If we are assigning a diet to one group and say no diet assignment, eat whatever you want, or perhaps an assigned diet versus an exercise regimen, that's experimental. If we simply capture the information that people of what they are eating, that's an observational study. In terms of which of these is a better question, it should be, is age associated with blood pressure? 
cause or writing causal question requires some very specific set of circumstances for the type of experimental design that you have. So often our questions are more general, looking at association, correlation, or relationship. When writing a research question, this is what you are trying to show. Is age associated with blood pressure? Questions need to be about associations and specific to your groups or intervention if you have a randomized or group study. Causation is incredibly difficult to prove. In fact, we never prove anything in statistics. We bring evidence to make a conclusion. So what about variable types and measurements? For each of the following questions, note which type of variable it is. A for dichotomous, B for ordinal, C for nominal, or D for continuous. What type of variable is race? A variable with two options is called what? Age group is what type of variable? Versus age in years is what type of variable? Remember, many variables can be collected in multiple different ways. So think very carefully about the most common way that age group would be collected versus age in years. Race is a nominal categorical variable. So the answer is C. There's no inherent order to the levels of race. A variable with two options is dichotomous. The di and dichotomous means two, so two levels. These are categorical variables, but because there are only two options, we don't distinguish between ordinal or nominal. It is simply a dichotomous categorical variable. Age group is an ordinal categorical variable. If people select less than 16, 17 to 20, 21 to 25, or 26 higher, there is inherent order to those options. That is an ordinal categorical variable. Age in years, however, is a continuous variable. So you'd simply collect the numeric response and it becomes a continuous variable. For each of the following, select A, B, or C. Mean and standard deviation for A. Median IQR or median with the range or minimum and maximum is B or C and percent, and determine what the best summary statistic would be for a categorical variable. How would you report the results from categorical variables? What about a symmetric continuous variable? And what about a skewed continuous variable? So take a moment to think about how these variables are distributed and what is the best way to report them if you were telling someone about your data. A categorical variable, the correct answer is C, N in percent. Always give the N in percent. For a symmetric continuous variable, report A, the mean and standard deviation. You'll also want to report the N that's associated with the number of responses that you have. And for a skewed continuous variable, the most appropriate measure of central tendency is the median with IQR, which is the interquartile range, or the median with the minimum and the maximum. For reporting, again, report N for all variables and N missing, or the number of missing observations, if that's applicable. Continuous measures will use the mean and standard deviation, the median with either the interquartile range or the minimum and maximum, you can also use the mode. Remember, the mode is the most common response. For categorical variables, always report the N in percent. And again, you can report the mode, which is the most common level that was given. If at all possible, collect data as continuous measures and then categorize it later. So we've looked at types of variables, how to determine the best research question, and how to report the variables that you need for evidence. 
Up next, we'll look at the possible analysis methods that you can use to analyze data.